So getting into volume one of The Eminence in Shadow, as far as a, a review goes, honestly, I really enjoyed this, this light novel, this particular first volume, and I'm really excited to see where the story goes. I think what got me most interested in it was the same thing with the first episode of the anime, it's just that it's a very unique way of doing an isekai and it's a very unique kind of main protagonist a main protagonist that is very fixated on trying to make himself the side character and it was just really fun he has chibios for those that don't know what that is it's basically creating kind of fictional realities in their mind and trying to role play them out it's like pretend that's basically it it's just that that's the word that they use in japan it's called chibios there's many animes based on that there's some really good classics out there as well and some of those i've really enjoyed and this is again no exception i really enjoyed the main protagonist in that but i have noticed that some people don't like the chibios theme but i think what i enjoy about it is just that unique spin to it and also how the other characters react because it's not just from his perspective but also from other point of views other characters in the world and how they all sort of interact and how he interacts with them and how he has that kind of dual personality with shadow and sid and seeing him try to sort of role play out this kind of side character but ends up being the main character just him not realizing that he is the main character even though he's trying to play out this fantasy of being a side character and all the other characters that he interacts with especially at the start where he establishes the shadow garden and how the girls end up building this kind of underground organization and i just find it funny because some of the stuff he doesn't even realize like for example when he's going out shopping with his friends and they're going out and they bump into this place that's selling chocolate and it's like kind of this new thing going on and instantly when i f saw that in the light novel i was like there has to be some isekai component of that it's like because of the way they set it up it's like this new fancy sort of trend coming out chocolate and all this kind of fancy culture change and everyone's all sort of captivized by it. it's the big new hot thing that everyone wants to be part of and thinks amazing and then it's just one of the girls that serves him ended up listening to all the stories that he gave and then kind of built this sort of i would i would not call it empire but just establishment that ended up making a boatload of money and then he's kind of like oh yeah can i have some of this money and then they're just like oh yeah i have it all and he just kind of only takes a well he pretends he takes a little bit but actually takes a fair bit more i just those interactions are really fun it reminds me a lot of Overlord, and I made a video called Overlord vs. the Eminence in the Shadow, a match made in heaven. So check out that video if you're interested, and it's the same feeling. It just feels like like these girls that serve him see no wrong. Like, everything he says and does always plays out exactly that. Like, he made up this occult group, and then it ended up being true. And when he decides to go the wrong direction, accidentally or not depending on the situation it ends up being the right direction and it's just kind of one of those like he creates his own reality and I kind of had this weird theory when I first started reading it was that is he almost creating his own alternate reality that's kind of molding around him and again I don't want spoilers it was just kind of like coincidental that like everything he he says and he he in his mind he's like oh yeah this is all made up the girls are playing along with it and then it all ends up coming true but he still thinks it's all fake and all make believe because he did he made it all up in his head but it all ends up being true so it kind of made me wonder is that does he have a type of power where he's creating the very things in his head and they end up coming true it's just some it's just kind of a theory that I, i've been wondering and i probably won't find out until many 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 volumes in currently as far as the light novel releases go there are only four volumes out currently but there is also the web novel as well i've been told some parts of the web novel and the light novel are alike and some parts are different i believe some people told me that volume three and onwards is different so yeah i'm really excited to see where this story goes especially with the fact that right at the start and this was something I noted in my first episode review for the anime was that in the very start of the story it doesn't start off with just instant transformation it's not like oh yeah I'm in this new world and here's a little bit of a backstory that's like a, a paragraph long no it goes straight into the world that he's currently in and kind of establishes his mindset his daily life and you get to see some of that play out and then you see him 
die and then be reincarnated from the very beginning again though the difference between say like this and say like jobless reincarnation jobless reincarnation goes through the growing up period very i wouldn't say slow is a bad thing but it goes through it very slow like slow isn't bad but it goes through it piece by piece by piece as Rudy is his life growing up, while this one kind of does skip over some of the minor stuff, just kind of gives enough information to kind of establish magic, training, family, who he ends up having ties with as he's growing up, and then kind of sits in that kind of more young, or I would say more actually more older teenager stage, and then he's got his kind of school, college, uni kind of life, however you want to go, go about it, depending on which country or part of the world you come from. Everyone has a different way of saying the secondary, tertiary, higher up education. So I do really like that because it's done in a slightly unique fashion. And that's one of the issues that you run into with isekai type stories and power fantasies is that a lot of those stories can be very similar. They can feel very much alike especially when you're thrown into this isekai world the main protagonist is part of a cogwheel and that's kind of it and it's just that establishment but this does quite a nice spin to it and it's you, you're never going to get a complete like reimagine of the wheel but i do like what it tries to do here and maybe i just haven't consumed enough isekais i i feel like i've consumed a lot of isekais but maybe i've missed a couple that are very similar to this type of story but for me it feels very unique as far as explaining some of the premise of the story for those that don't know, again, this is a review, not an explained or synopsis video, but to kind of give a basics of it is that the main protagonist, Sid, who also goes under the ruse Shadow, is basically living a dual life where he pretends to be the leader of a organization called the Shadow Garden run by a bunch of girls, one of which he saved and then kind of the organization grew and they're trying to fight fight against a cult of evildoers that he made up off the top of his head that ended up com becoming completely true and that's why i have that theory of him creating almost his own reality he's in it at, at school he's studying he's learning and some of the things that he does is just hilarious like he asks a chick out thinking okay i'm gonna get rejected i'm gonna ask her out i get to look like the sort of side character that gets rejected but then he gets accepted like she says yes i'll go out with you and then there's this whole underlining plot where she's using him to kind of try and get out of a sticky situation and she's just sadistic she's just crazy but i really liked her character and i look forward to seeing more of her because she's just completely wonkos but i love i love crazy characters and then going from there, he also gives chocolates to a girl who also then has a crush on him. And then he ends up saving another girl, trying to be a side character, being like, I'll sacrifice myself as a side character to protect the main character. And she ends up falling for him. <laughs> That's what I love about it. That whole role playing where he's trying to pretend to be the side character of this story, where he is the main character trying to be this like It's such a fun kind of contradiction in itself. And that's what I really enjoyed about it. It was really fun to just kind of go through the story and see him kind of go about navigating through this world and all the different cast and characters that interact with him there are a lot of girls though in this story so he is surrounded by a lot of women but there are some male friends that he has i, I would say they're a love-hate relationship his friends kind of can be like it's like the free stooges kind of thing so it, it it really is fun really enjoy reading it and i'm looking forward to reading more of it but i'm also really looking forward to the anime as well this is one of those where you can read a light novel and then when the anime comes out you don't really care as much about the anime for me it's the opposite like it sometimes works sometimes doesn't it depends on the light novel series only a couple have worked out like overlord jobless reincarnation Darmachi, and this is one of those i guess maybe it just depends on the type of genre because i read a lot of romance series and when reading those, I don't care as much about watching the anime because I've kind of like, I've seen the romance, I've seen it all play out. And then I'm like, eh, it, the anime wasn't as interesting. But I'm really excited to see how the anime plays out for this because I want to see how they animate, how they have all these characters look, interact. It's just super, super, super excited. And I will most likely do more videos on this channel, breaking down different key elements of characters, development points, explaining some things. But for me, as far as a f sort of first impressions into the series goes, 
really enjoy it, but I don't think it's for everyone. I have seen some people kind of hate on it, being like, oh, they don't like the kind of chibio feel. I think it's just because the main protagonist is not your typical main protagonist. He's not like a stud muffy. He's not perfect. Well, he, he is perfect, but he's a little bit weird. It's That's the thing. It, it's an interesting mix, and it's really hard to kind of put words down to really define his character because he's a bit of a kind of a mix of different things and that's what makes it interesting to me so i'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below i will probably be doing follow-up videos discussing more in detail of what my thoughts are this is just very raw thoughts because i've just finished reading it and i just want to get my raw thoughts out and then as i think about things more and stew on it and kind of build a concrete idea of what i think and don't think about the story then I'll do a follow-up video and do more an analytical explain style video. So again, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe for more anime content, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.